So the thing that people is going to probably face when they're going, let's say they had that $50,000 salary. Now they can barely afford it. Or let's say they just get their job. They lose their job, right? Now they have to find a different industry or the same industry, just find a job, what to do. Let's say they finally find that new industry and they're like, all right, I'm going to try to be the best I can at this. Early on, and I always explain this to people, there when you're trying to learn a new industry, you probably, the first year or two, you probably won't get much results because you're just learning. You're a mm-hmm. beginner, right? Mm-hmm. Then it's exponentially you start really compounding that results. During those two years when you just don't know if it's gonna work, <laughs> how do you keep pushing, especially if you're a single father yeah. and all this stuff, you know? I call that the great abyss because you don't know how far it's gonna go down. Yeah, You're just falling, 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 falling. But I think if you, um, it's something that can give us some basis. Okay, you have to know what your expenses are. If you've got a formula, and no matter how much money you sunk into this formula, that eventually get a positive return. That, that was my faith in doing it. If I just spent five thousand dollars a month on these dinner seminars, hmm. if I spent five thousand dollars on this marketing campaign, like for example, the work that we're doing, we're about to do with you. I don't know what this whole world of YouTube and, and all this stuff. Even though our channel, t- I think two days, yesterday, Ivan crossed over two hundred thousand subs. Nice. I still don't know the world of YouTube yet. Yeah. Right? I still don't know the world. Hey, and by the way, I still don't know. <laughs> like, I don't even know. Amen to that, bro. Sheesh. And so uh, if you can find a formula knowing that if I invest X amount of time and money into this thing, but I get X amount of output out, have faith in that formula and how many times you can run that formula. So for example, if I spend $5,000 a month on dinner seminars, but I make fifteen to $20,000 in commission sales mm. when I get what got it completed, that's a formula I can bank on. Because then it's just a matter of how long I can stop sucking doing dinner seminars and actually start increasing my skill set so I can close better mm-hmm. at the end of the dinner seminars. I, I mean, I had a couple seminars there where I had zero return, three, you know, three months return. I was like, should I keep doing this thing? I suck at doing dinner seminars, just come with the military, PTSD, and don't know how to publicly speak, trying to do dinner seminars, trying to get business. Fourth month, fifth month, after that, boom, 20,000 income month, boom, 50,000 income month, boom. Hundred thousand dollar income month, and I just kept let me just fund this thing for the you know for the next six to twelve months in advance, hmm. and so after that, I just started chunking my money away, saving my, my, my money, away. and then the 08, 09 Great Recession hit, and I flipped my money buying somebody's Bentley, uh, and I flipped my money from that sale into a piece of real estate, I flipped my money into other other deals, and I was able to capitalize myself. What do you say though to the people like the Bentley part, right? So. Those sometimes people in a bad situation like a recession, right? And things are going south. Uh-huh. Let's say you finally hustled, you finally got 300K in, in, in the bank. Nice. They're like, dude, my bills are, let's say, 15,000 a month. You're like, well, I kind of want to hold on to this. Like, I, I don't know what's going to happen. Everything's so crazy right now. Yeah. And then you see that Bentley deal. You're like, well, technically, I could maybe buy for 150, sell for 250 later, like all this other stuff. But you're like, but I don't know. You have all these fears. You know how people, when, when things are going good, they're like, you can make money off of Bitcoin right now. It's going up. Let's get in right now. Yeah. Once it goes down, you hear Warren Buffett say, that's the perfect time to get in. Everyone's like, well, you know, yeah. they don't know if they can because they're scared. Yeah. So how in the time when there's perfect timing to get into the market and how do you capitalize on it with that getting rid of that fear side of it yeah you know what i mean you just have to dig deeper some people see the initial move but they don't see the next three four five moves so for example i, I never saw the next three four five moves with crypto or nfts yeah everybody around me was hey you need to get in this crypto you need to get this nft i almost did now by the way in crypto i put one percent of my portfolio inside of it because the what if. Same. Because the other 99%, I didn't I, yeah. I didn't know formula. There was no fundamentals behind it. No. In, 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 in retrospect, we can just call it, it was one big fat pump and dump. Yeah. Right? Let's, let's pump it up and let's dump it. And yeah. the, the few powers that be that control it, they profited the most and everybody else, oh, I think I'm writing this. I think I'm writing it. I'll make some money. Next thing, whoop, rug pull. Right? And so uh, when it comes to Bentley, it's a titled asset. Mm. Comes a property. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a tangible piece of, of, of uh, it's a tangible asset. Gold, it's a tangible asset. Mm. By the way, this bag, this belt, somebody just sold it to me because they're getting rid of their assets because mm. they overspent during their good times. Right. So this bag cost 3,000 bucks. I picked it up for 1,000 bucks, right? No problem. Go go keep spending. Where do you do, do you go to going broke on eBay.com? <laughs> like, where, where do you go for that? I, I, got a, I got, always got a lot of feelers on Same reason why Patrick sold that, uh, what do you call that, that uh, hockey card, yeah. that, uh, uh, that, what's that hockey player? I don't even uh, know how. Wayne Gretzky. Oh, yeah. Wayne Gretzky. I saw when he bought it for 500 gay. He came to the <laughs> office and he had gloves. Came in, a, came in a box. I'm looking at I took a picture of it. I'll send, it, I'll send it to you later. I'm like, $500,000 a freaking. For this, yeah. For this thing, two, two hockey cards. During the pandemic, sold, sold for like $2.1 million. Yeah. I'm like, get out of here. Because it's moved like that. See, cards like that, collectibles, those are serial titled. Those are assets. Oh. Somebody in the marketplace finds those as 
as, mm. as valuable. You know, so when, when you're looking at uh, certain things, that's the move behind it. If I buy it, who potentially might pick it up to as well? Because mm. I might be able to find a, I might be able to buy it in an inexpensive price, but other people may be looking for the same things, same thing too as well. They just ne- may not be tied into the network I am. So I, then if they're going forward, it's about just negotiating mm. the best price. So for you, do you mainly try to look for the physical material? Like material I like the stuff? physical, because okay. you can touch it. So do you like, do any like digital, like, I mean, I know uh, you do life insurance, but like, sure. but like outside talk, of that. We're talking about the ultimate intangible, right? Yeah, I do yeah, life yeah, insurance, yeah. I can't touch it. Yeah, but I mean, I'm, I'm like stocks, any of that, like what is like your go-to investments that you usually like to go for? But my, my primary is my life insurance policies. Mm-hmm. I shove a lot of cash inside my life insurance policies, life insurance retirement plans. I bought four cars through my uh, life insurance retirement plan. I don't pay any interest to any bank out there. Mm. If, uh, uh, for example, you know, we just got a, a Rolls Royce delivered to to the to the office. It's a two hundred eighty thousand dollar Rolls Royce, right? I took a fifty thousand uh, dollar I took a fifty thousand dollar cash and just wired just to get them delivered. But I took the cash from our policy, mm. paid the dealership with it, and now my two thousand three what I would normally pay the bank, I'm just paying that back to my life insurance policy. So mm. I lost no interest. Better part of it. You know this about cars because I placed it in the uh, uh, area of my business, and it's just shy of six thousand pounds. But if it, w- it wasn't even SUV anyway, yeah. but I can write off the bonus. I can write off the depreciation. Section one seventy nine to uh, yeah. amortize over the next five years, the cost of that car on my taxes. Hmm. So I get the benefit of tax deducting my car, but also the benefit of not paying any interest to Capital One or Bank of America, yeah. or Fargo. I keep it inside. So interest that would normally have been lost. I recoup, it's been my bank. So that's my primary. 